Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. I want to welcome you back to my channel this week. This week we're going to image Messier 33, the Triangulum Galaxy. This is one of my favorite objects in the night sky. It's an incredible galaxy face on. We're able to see it, get an incredible amount of detail in it. And uh, I am really excited about the final picture that I produced. In my opinion, it's the best astro image that I have produced yet. Um, if you're if you're new to my channel, we're going to walk through this every step. I'm going to show you, first of all, how I polar align using sharp cap. Then we're going to look at how I plate solve an astrophotography tool to get my star alignment done. And then I'll show you how I focus all of the preliminary steps getting ready. Then we're going to show you how I imaged it and then even processed it in astro pixel processor and in... Um, Photoshop. If you're not interested in all of that, you can just look at the first portion where I tell you a little bit about the triangulum, then fast forward to the end and you'll be able to see the final pictures. But I hope you'll stick around. If you're an experienced astrophotographer, man, critique me. Tell me where I can improve. Tell me some places where I can do a little bit better or things that suggestions that you might have. If you are inexperienced, I hope this will help you. I hope it'll show you at least how I do it. I'm not saying I do it perfect or I I'm doing it the only way or even the right way, but um, I hope that you'll take a look. Stick around. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, M33, and then we will get started on imaging. Okay, let me take a quick minute here and show you what I'm going to be imaging. Um, you can see here I've got Stellarium opened up, and this is real time here today, and um, so it's not quite dark. So I thought I'd take a minute to uh, go ahead and just tell you a little bit about this. Let me go over and search for M33. You see it will take me over. I'm going to be looking to towards my northeastern sky, and it's still a little bit low, but I've got about another hour or so before I'm going to be able to be all set up and ready to image. If I go ahead and, and um, let me put my... Uh, my imaging reticle over top of it so you can see. And I'm going to advance the time just a little bit, about an hour. And here you can see uh, the Triangulum Galaxy. It's called the Triangulum Galaxy because, of course, it is located in the constellation Triangulum. It is also near in proximity to the Andromeda Galaxy. In fact, Andromeda, the Milky Way, and the Triangulum form the three largest galaxies in our local group of galaxies. So this is kind of our neighbor, our sister in the sky. Um, it is about 2.7 uh, million light years away from the Earth. And uh, you can see here real quick, this is a picture that I took of it last year. This was taken right around, this was taken on January the 1st of this year. And I believe this was probably shot with my ZWO-224 and I'm sure it was shot with my Celestron 6 SCT. This is not a very good picture of the triangulum. It's about as good as I could do back then. I'm not even sure I had good guiding on it, or any guiding for that matter. It doesn't look like it. This was probably done more as an electronic, uh, electronically assisted astronomy picture uh, where I was just looking at it and kind of got the picture. But one of the things I like about it is you can see some of this purple in here. And I'm hoping to capture some of that color tonight, try to get a really good deep image of the Triangulum Galaxy. So I'm getting ready. I'm going to get ready to start setting up my polar alignment. And we will be ready to uh, uh, shoot here in just a little bit. So stick around. A week or two ago, I got a... Uh, Facebook message from one of my YouTube viewers asking me how I do polar alignment. So I thought I would show it to you really quickly. The first thing I do, by the way, is I do use the polar alignment scope on my Skywatcher HEQ5 to get sort of a rough polar alignment. I just kind of basically try to get it lined up um, in the uh, polar scope. And uh, then I come over and use SharpCap. And SharpCap has a great little tool if you have the pro version. Uh, up here in Tools, you click on Polar Alignment. And what this will end up doing, it will take a couple of pictures. And uh, the first thing it will do is it will take a few pictures and it will figure out, plate solve, where it's looking at in the sky right now. Okay, 
Now, just a couple of quick, quick things. I usually use about a 500 millisecond exposure. You might have to use a little more, a little less, depending on your setup. And I set mine up with a gain of 325. Okay, once it comes up, it will just walk you through. Press the next button before rotating the RA axis. So you click on that, on next. Wait for a second. It will tell you to uh, rotate the RA axis. Now you'll loosen the clutch. Turn your RA axis about 90 degrees. It's going to take a couple more images. Plate solve that, and you will see it's already, I have a pretty good polar alignment. And uh, the, re the way I'm able to do that, by the way, is I mark some spots on my driveway where my uh, tripod legs are at. So I can set it up at the same place every time. Now I click on next. And now all I've got to do is come over. You can see here, I'm pretty good left and right. In fact, right now it looks like I'm perfect. And my I need to move up just a little bit. So I reach over here and I turn the adjustment and we'll see what happens. Okay, got a little bit better. Now I'm going to turn it just a little tiny bit more. It's going to get a little better. Once I get excellent, um, I'm polar aligned, and you can see it'll do that. Now, what I do on this, I run through this process three times, and I find that gives me really good polar alignment. It makes, just gives me a, a good sense that things are locked down. Uh, some people don't do that. They'd be happy with this. I run through it times. But I thought I'd take you and show you that real quick. This makes polar alignment super simple. It makes it worth the subscription fee for the Sharp Cap Pro. So, um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and finish up here, do my star alignment, and then uh, we will get to imaging. All right, I hadn't intended to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how I get my Skywatcher HEQ5 um, aligned. We ju I just showed you how I do the polar alignment. Once I'm polar aligned, really this is super simple. You can see here my telescope is parked, so I'm going to go ahead and unpark it. I'm going to go ahead and start my cooling aid. I'm going to try to take this down to minus 10 degrees. Then what I'm going to do is go over here to gear, this Sastro photography tool. I'm going to go over to gear, and I'm going to go to objects, and then I'm going to pick a star. The one that I've been using here lately is Deneb. So we'll go to Deneb, press go to. You might be able to hear the telescope is uh, moving. While it's doing this, I'm going to make sure I've got my exposure set to 10. I've got my gain set to 111, which is unity gain on the ZWO 183MC Pro. Once it stops, you'll see over here that it will, uh, it's still slewing. It'll take just a second, it's gonna settle here. Once it's done and settled, all I'm gonna do is come over here and take a quick picture. Now, the way I'm gonna align is just using, by the way, I'm going to use a um, plate solving here in Astrophotography Tool. If you haven't set up plate solving, go do it right now. It will make your life so much simpler. Um, I take a picture. All right, there's the picture. You can see I'm not lined up on Deneb. The telescope thinks it's pointing to Deneb, but it's not there. So what I do is I go back to gear. I go to point craft, okay? Click on scope position. That's going to put that where the telescope thinks it's at. And then what I'm gonna do is do a blind plate solve on this image. So I click blind. And this will take just a little bit. Sometimes it goes very quickly, 10, 15 seconds. Sometimes it'll take a mi you know, up to a minute. But uh, just be patient. It will find it. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go down here and go to Objects. And I'm going to put Deneb in here. And you'll see why in just a second. Just give it a couple of seconds here. Soon as it solves it. The blind plate solve usually takes a little, there it is, it's solved. Um, now, what I do with that is I click sync. Once I've clicked sync, now that tells the telescope what it's actually looking at. Then I've put the coordinates for Deneb in here. We did that a second ago. Then I hit go to plus plus. 
and this will slew me over and get me lined up. You'll see it's going to move Deneb. I'll take a picture, another picture. It's made the adjustment for how much it was offset. It's taking a picture. And there we go. Deneb is just about dead center. Now what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and plate solve that again to make sure it's exactly where it needs to be. Okay. Now, the next thing I have to do for setup is go ahead and take care of my focus. And I'm going to use Deneb to do that again. Let me go ahead and just pause this for a second and get set up. I'm going to put my batten off mask on, and then I will show you how I can use a very handy tool here in astrophotography uh, tools to get my um, focus in. Give me just a second. Okay, I've got the batten off mask on, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to reduce my uh, exposure time down to three seconds, and I'm going to click on Live View. And that's going to bring up the image through my telescope. And you can already see I'm pretty close to being um, uh, focused, not very far off. In fact, in days gone past, I would have been satisfied with that. I would have looked at that and said, that's great. But APT has a great tool in it called the Battenoff Mask Tool. And this is going to help me refine this focus even more. Okay? So what I do is I just take this Battenoff aid, I slide this over, and I kick, click Recalculate. And this is going to show me I will be just slightly off. I'm not very, it says far, but uh, it's not that far. Now I'm just going to go ahead and, and make a little turn on the uh, focus knob, the fine focus knob. That made it a little bit better. That got a little bit worse. Okay, I'm going the wrong direction. So let me turn it back this way. There we go. And I just make this fine adjustment. And I never get it to a perfect zero. But what I want to do is get this down as close to 0, 0.00 as I can. Okay, I went just slightly too far. I'm going to adjust it. That's a little bit. Move it up again. Move it just a little further. And I'm going to be pretty happy with that. Now, by the way, my days of doing it this way, I've been using a batten off mask since I started astrophotography. My hope is, is that because my wife loves me so much, she is going to buy me a uh, automatic focuser, electronic focuser for Christmas. And uh, once I've done that, that will make life much simpler. Okay, so I'm aligned, I'm polar aligned. I'm, I've got my basic star alignment done, okay? That's what I did when I plate solved and went to Deneb. That uh, put over here in my EQ mod, if I go ahead and open that up, you'll see now that I have a, um, um, a star point. I have one star um, in there in my uh, pointing uh, map, which is really all I need right now. You can go out in and add more stars and just do it the same way if you want to. But because of uh, where I'm at, I just use plate solving. It works great. Okay, I'm going to take the batten off mask off and uh, we're going to go over and I'm going to get my uh, uh, guiding started and get lined up on Andromeda and we will be ready to image. Okay, I'm uh, ready to go ahead and go over and point the telescope to M33. And again, this is very, very simple with astrophotography tools. I'm going to go over here to go to, or I'm sorry, I'm going to go to objects, M33, okay, which is Triangulum Galaxy. Click on OK, and then press go to. I don't know if you can hear it, but my telescope is slewing. I'm just going to leave it on live view right now so that you can kind of see that. Again, it's probably just a little bit early for me to start imaging. Um, so I'm going to get this lined up and then wait just a little longer. And then I'll, I'll we'll wait till the sky gets just slightly darker. But um, uh, this will give you an idea of how I do this. Very simple. I'm going to go ahead and change the camera over here. I'm going to take it off live view. I'm going to go down here and go to a 10-second exposure. 
And again, all I'm going to do is very, very simple. I'm going to take a picture. Click it, take a quick 10 second shot. I'm going to go ahead and go to gear, open my point craft. Okay. And now I'm going to click on point craft, scope position. Okay. That's going to tell where it, me uh, generally about where it thinks that I am. I'm now going to click on solve. Instead of blind solve, I'm going to go to solve. That reduces the amount of area around that the plate solver is looking for. It usually makes it a little bit more efficient. Look at that. That was like five seconds, maybe three seconds. Okay, so now it knows where I'm at. I'm going to click on here to sync so that it will mark it in exactly where the telescope is looking at so EQ uh, mod will know. I'm going to go to objects. I'm going to go again to M33, triangulum, and go to. And this is going to run through, and this will get the triangulum galaxy centered up perfectly on my camera. You'll see it in just a moment. Okay. It's going to take a quick 10 second shot. Okay, now you really can't see much here yet. Uh, it's still working, of course. It's going to plate solve this. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. It says it's lined up. Of course, a 10 second shot is not going to show you much. I might be able to see a little bit of the spiral galaxy in there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and come over here and let me make sure that my guide is on. Okay, or my uh, tracking's on. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to go ahead and shoot about a, um, let's go ahead and shoot a 60 second shot just to make sure we're lined up and make sure things are looking good. So I changed the bulb seconds uh, to 60 seconds, went to bulb. Now I'm going to go ahead and just shoot one of these. We'll take a look and that'll give us just enough detail to make sure we're lined up. So I know we have to wait for a minute. I, I need some cool music to play here. Um, I can actually pause this for just a second, pause the video for just a second. Okay, this picture will be coming up here in just a second. Let's see, five, four, three, two, one, Extension zero. Finished. And this will give me a little better picture. Okay. Uh, again, not great, but you can see the triangulum is centered up here. It's very dim, but you can see the three stars that sort of form this. This is the core of the triangulum. You really can't see it great here, but that means it's everything is lined up. Okay, so I'm going to wait till it gets a little bit darker, and uh, I'll start my uh, guiding, and uh, we'll be ready to image tonight. Okay, I uh, have got my guiding up and running. This is not the best guiding that I've ever gotten in my life. Obviously, 1.04 is my total uh, RMS error. Um, but the, the object is still kind of sitting. M33 is still a little bit low in my sky. So as this moves up, I expect this to improve a little bit. Also, as the sky gets a little darker, I think uh, my guiding is going to improve um, as it goes along. But... Um, we're about ready to get my first image come up here. This is not um, a part of my imaging plan. This is just the first four-minute sub that I've taken. There we go. You can kind of see a little bit. Uh, here is the um, Triangulum Galaxy. It's pretty faint right now, uh, but you can kind of see the core there. You can see the spiral arms. Um, it looks like things are centered up pretty good. Um, and so uh, I think that's going to be pretty decent. Um, my camera is just about cooled down. I think I am going to take a minute and just double check my focus and make sure that my focus is okay. Um, and uh, and everything. These stars look just a little bit large to me, but they might be fine. They might be fine. I'm going to go ahead and double check my um, my. Uh, focus and then uh, if everything's good I'm going to come back over and we will get started on the full imaging plan oh by the way let me go ahead and show that to you real quick my imaging plan is over here um, basically what I'm going to be doing is shooting 20 240 second four minute long subs 
and then I'll do that repeatedly and I'll come out every hour that gives me one hour of imaging and I'll come out double check my focus start back up again and I'll show you how I do that a little bit later on all right but that'll give you an idea of what I'm going to be going after okay well I'm going to go ahead and double check this focus and then get started imaging and uh, we'll be on it So you can see here, I've stacked my image in Astro Pixel Processor. Over here on tab number one, you'll see that I've stacked 109 light uh, frames. Um, each one of those subframes was one, uh, 240 seconds, four minutes long. So I've got a total integration time here of seven hours and 15 minutes. I've also stacked in um, a master flat, a master dark flat, a master or a master dark and a master dark flat. Each one of those, I think I had uh, 40 flats, 20 darks and 40 uh, dark flats and stack those to make my masters. And overall, I'm pretty happy. I'll show you the, the, the uh, settings that I put this on integration, just so you can see what I've done here. Um, I've stacked 90% of, or 98 of the 190 frames. So that's 90% of my frames. Um, I, I, I changed weights to exposure. I probably could have done that on quality as well. It might have even come out better on quality, but you can, you can pick whichever one of those that you want. I went to a first degree local normalization correction uh, with three iterations, and that uh, just sort of evens out the... Um, uh, picture a little bit here. I went and clicked on enable multiband blending. I don't think that's honestly all of that important when you're when you're stacking this kind of thing. That really becomes important in a mosaic, which this is not. So that's probably not really all that important. But I went ahead and checked it. I put my outlier rejection at Mad Windsor Clip. This is what I always use. Um, I have tested a number of different algorithms with my data. And it just seems that that works best for me. Uh, you can check it out, see what works good for you. Um, I also did something because my data was a little bit undersampled. I went ahead and uh, drizzled this out the 2.0 scale bare drizzle. I'm using a Keller CMOS camera, so that's why I used bare drizzle. Um, and uh, basically that uh, helps me to increase the resolution. So this picture now is twice the size that would have normally been and uh, gives me a little bit better resolution. Overall, just looking around at the picture uh, without doing anything else to it so far, you can see I've got a little bit of a stacking aberration up here, which is perfectly normal. You're always going to have that. But looking into the galaxy here, I'm really pleased with it. Um, the noise isn't too bad. You can see if I get really zoomed in there, I'm always going to have a little bit of color noise. We'll get that out here in just a couple of moments. But the detail is really good. You can see here's some of the nebulosity down here inside of the galaxy. Here's another area of nebulosity. I know just from doing a little bit of research on this, this area up in here is actually a star cluster inside of the M33. So you're looking at a star cluster um, in another galaxy which is that's kind of neat i'm amazed by that you can see some of these little areas of um of uh they almost look orange here they'll probably come out pink by the time i'm done um in you know with the with all of the adjustments here and all of the processing this is a massive area of nebulosity down here so overall i'm pretty happy the stars are pretty round they look pretty good uh, out here on the edges, let's take a look at the edges. Not too bad. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm getting a fairly flat frame there. Um, again, you could, you know, you're always hoping that that's going to work out good. You can see here, uh, here's a star. There's one right close to it, so you have a little bit of a double star right there, um, which is kind of neat. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, there's a few things that we want to adjust on this. Um, we're going to start with going and doing um just making sure we get all the gradient out so the way i'm going to do that is go to remove light pollution click on yes it's going to neutralize the background here give it just a second sorry my computer's a little bit slow 
soon as it's done with that. Then all you have to do to do this is you're going to draw some little squares. You want to try not to get too many stars in there. You can get one or two, but don't try to get areas where there are no stars. Certainly you don't want any part of the galaxy. And you're going to draw these little boxes all over so that it can get a good sample. I'm going to pause this while I draw my boxes and then we'll come back. Okay, you can see I've got my boxes drawn out here all over the image. And now all I do is press calculate. And this will go in here and there are any gradients or if there's a lot of light pollution, it will balance it out a little bit for me and hopefully give me a little bit better picture. So we'll wait for a couple of seconds here. You can see it's processing. Again, I don't see a lot of gradient in this image, but it can be lurking in there and give you problems later on. So this is always a good step to run. Um, just to talk about something here, if you are shooting nebulas, that can be a little bit more difficult. Um, but uh, if you're patient and draw out enough boxes here, usually this tool will work pretty good. There you go. You can see it's kind of uh, corrected some of the background for me. So now I'm going to press OK and save. OK again, OK again. Now one thing you have to remember on Astro Pixel Processor is when it saves it, it's going to place that new uh, image down here at the bottom of your list. So you want to open that up. Next thing we're going to do is go over here and we're going to go ahead and calibrate our star colors. And the way that we do that is very simple. Let, for, let this image uh, load up. Okay, so we're going to click on Calibrate Star Colors. Yes. And what you want to do here is pick out a fair number of stars. You don't want to get into the galaxy on this, but, but go out here and draw a few boxes. With this image, I can draw fairly large boxes simply because I'm not dealing with a lot of nebula or anything. Just stay out of the galaxy. All right, so now I've got my boxes selected. You press the calculate, and this is going to put together what is known as, I believe it's called a Hertzberg-Ross uh, uh, diagram. And um, this is going to show you the, the, uh, the, the uh, distribution of colors of stars. And uh, that deals with their mass and the amount of uh, uh, brightness and the color. And uh, it's going to give you a recommendation. Now, you can go in there and adjust using these sliders. You can adjust the, the colors of the stars the, the way, however you want to. And there's a very scientific way of doing this. In fact, on Astro Stacy's channel, she walks through that entire process. Basically, what I do is I let it run. I let the I let the program figure out what it thinks it should be, and I go ahead and I just go ahead and save that. All right. Um, again, you can get a little bit more detailed in that if you want. Now uh, that brings us to our next step. Okay, the next step on our um, process here is to work on our color balance a little bit and the color in the picture. And we're going to use this HSL Selective Color tool to do that. Press yes here. And I am going to actually follow the steps that are on the astropixel.com uh, website. They have a um, tutorial there on the HSL Selective Keller, um, and I'm going to just walk through that. And the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to reduce some of the green pixels. As you know, with a Keller CMOS camera, you have for every red and blue pixel, you have two green pixels. So you have a red, a two greens, and a blue pixel um, for, you know, for each point on the camera. And so uh, what you want to do is get uh, some of the green knocked down. And the way we do that is we go to uh, this selector, we cl we'll click on green, okay? And then we are going to go to zero to 100% range. And we are going to kick up the green to magenta slider. We're going to turn all the green over to magenta. And what we're going to do then is slide the saturation button down to minus 50. 
or approximately minus 50, as close as I can get moving this slider. Okay, and then I'm going to click on Calculate. We're going to let it run its process. And then click on Apply. Okay, so Calculate. Okay, uh, it calculated it, it made a slight change. Usually these changes are very subtle, not the easiest to see. Once you've done that, you wanna click on apply to apply those changes to the image. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna come down and, and improve some of the uh, blue. Now, this particular galaxy has a good bit of blue in it. So we're going to come down and uh, we're gonna select the um, we're going to select cyan from the selector here. We are going to now go to background to 70%. And we are going to increase that saturation up to 50%. Okay. We're going to click on calculate. It'll take a couple of seconds here. This is a very large picture, pixel, picture because we drizzled it. It's two times larger than it was uh, when I shot it. So this is a huge, massive picture. Now everything will take a little bit. All right, once you do that, I'm going to click on saturation over here just so I can see the color maybe a little bit better, I think. We'll see what that does. All right, now I'm gonna click on apply, okay? And so now you're already starting to see the color come out inside of the galaxy a little bit more, okay? The next thing we wanna do is select the blue. On blue then, we wanna go to zero to 70%, and we want to kick that saturation up to about 50%, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then click on calculate right so it's running through the calculation here in just a second should finish it up and we should be able to see a little more blue in the picture i don't know how well this will come out on the youtube video but actually i can see here on my screen a little bit of blue the changes are subtle but you're getting a little bit more detail each time Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to improve the saturation in the red and magenta areas. We're going to come down to red, okay, and we're going to once again go to 0 to 70%, and we're going to kick up the saturation to 50%. Okay, and that's not exact, it's 51.1, but I'm, I'm going to live with that. All right, click on calculate. All right, it's making the calculation now. And then I'm going to do the same thing, by the way. I'm gonna come down and do that with the Mahenta. Um, all right, so I brought a little bit more red. Now I'm gonna switch, oh, I wanna click on apply. Apply that to the picture. Okay, I want to do the same thing now with the Mahenta. Come down to Mahenta, and I'm going to go 0 to 70%, and I'm going to kick this up to 50. I want to mention something here when I, after, I, after I finish this here, all right? So move that to 50, approximately. Click Calculate. And while I'm doing that, I will mention that... Um, on his tutorial on this, he has this to go from zero to 40%. Um, and that's not an option in here. Maybe there's a way to change that. But uh, so I've been going with background to 70%, and that seems to work for me. You can try it any way you want, make those percentages. The idea here is you don't want to oversaturate uh, or overblow some of these stars. So that seems to be the, the, the gist, and that works pretty well for me. Okay, now... Um, that's all I'm really going to do on this um, side over here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and press uh, create. 
That's my color corrections for this image in Astro Pixel Processor. So we're going to go ahead and, and click on Create. We're going to save. And once it's saved this, we'll go back, click Cancel, go down. Now we will select uh, the image that we just saved. You always have to remember on Astro Pixel Processor, go to the bottom and load the last file in. And uh, give it a second here. Okay, so as you can see, overall, it, the picture's looking pretty good. Now it's time to go over and do some finishing touches over here in uh, Photoshop. So I want to go ahead and save this image, and we'll take it over to Photoshop now. Okay, I've got my Photoshop open. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull in the uh, picture that we just saved here. A uh, couple things that I want to do very quickly. I want to go ahead at this point and crop the picture. So I'm going to pull this crop. And why I'm doing that is I want to get rid of some of that stacking artifact that's out there around the edges. Don't get too alarmed by that. You're always going to have that uh, in astrophotography. It's very easy to get rid of. Just, just crop it out of there. Next thing that we're going to do then is... Um, we're going to go ahead and take care of some of the, um, hold on, go ahead and adjust the um, levels just a little bit here. So I'm going to go up to levels, and I'm going to pull this over just to darken the background up just a little bit. Um, again, you can do this. Some Sometimes guys don't, li uh, don't like to go too far with this. Don't get into the white. Just bring it right up here to the edge. You can see that dark in the background a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger so we can see. Again, um, lots of color in this image. It's looking pretty good so far. So um, let's try a couple things just to see if we can improve the image just a little bit. One thing I've got is some tools over here. I've got the astronomy tools that I downloaded. This is a great download, astronomy tools uh, version 1-6-2. Um, it's got a lot of great routines on it. I'm going to go ahead and click on make stars smaller. We'll try to reduce the size of the stars just a little bit. Let it run here for just a second. There we go. And uh, okay, so it that reduced the size of the stars. If you want to see the difference, let me, let me press Control Z, and then I can turn that layer on and off. And you'll see that darkened things a little bit. It it did reduce the stars just a tad. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten the image again. Um, the other thing that I can try on here, I don't know if I will keep this or not, but let's give it a shot. I'm going to go to Local Contrast Enhance. That may bring out these uh, arms just a little bit more. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. We'll see. I'm going to click on, on, on Run. We'll let, it, we'll let it do its deal here. It'll take just a second. Okay, it should be coming up here any second. It will finish out the processes. Okay, let's take a look here. Let me press Control Z. And let's look at the before and after. Let's turn that layer off and then let's turn it on. Off, on. You can see, look at this area right down in here. It really does help. It enhances the picture a good bit. Now, one thing you do when you get that is you add a little bit of noise into the picture. So sometimes this routine works very well. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flatten the level. The other thing I may try to do real quick is I'm going to, I'm going to click on my color balance here. And I'm going to see if I can adjust that. I, you'll notice that this pink this magenta is is uh, over here a good bit let me let me see what i can do to fix that if i bring that over just a little bit uh, that looks better doesn't it don't you think uh that seems to balance the color up just a tad i don't want to make the background real purple but i like that that looks a little bit better so you can play around with that if you want you could even go over here and play with this per channel um, on this particular image i don't think i'm going to do that because i kind of like how that looks 
All right, let's go ahead and flatten the image. And um, now let's go ahead and try to knock out a little bit of, I'll tell you what, let's try to brighten it just a little bit. See what happens when we brighten the image just a little. Uh, you start to see a little more detail. We could pull a little of the contrast up. Hmm, that looks, I like that. Um, it depends, again, This there's no science to this necessarily. Um, this is a lot of just what looks good to you. What do you like in your picture? And I'm going to bring that contrast up a little bit. I like that. I'll show you why. Um, I'm starting to be able to see some of these dust lanes down in here. That's looking pretty good to me. Okay. Now, you notice we've got a little bit of noise. Not a lot, but a little bit of noise. The way we're going to do that is go over to filter. There's actually two ways we could do this. We could go to camera raw filter. Let me show you that. And that will bring this up. And, and there's a couple of things that we could do here. Uh, one is we could, we could uh, this won't adjust the noise, but this may make the picture look better or worse. We can play around by bringing up the saturation a tad. And that brings out the, the color a little bit better in the image. We can also, you got to be careful playing with this texture and clarity here because you can really introduce a lot of noise. But if you play around with it a little bit, sometimes you can make the picture look. I like this because I like getting those dust lanes to show up nice. But I don't want to go too far with it. So you can just play around with that slide. You can also dehaze the picture a little bit. Um, I like to see the extent of the, the, of the, the galaxy. So I'm going to leave that up just a little bit. I kind of like, kind of like that. That looks pretty good. Um, it does, the, the, the camera raw does have a, a way, if I go to detail, I can sharpen the image up a little bit and I can also reduce noise, okay? So there I can sharpen that. I don't see that making very much change here. Maybe a little bit. Maybe we'll draw that up. And if you want to, if you want to deal with the with the noise here, you can bring the noise reduction and the Keller noise reduction up here. I'm actually going to use another tool uh, to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and press OK. That's going to apply the camera raw changes. There's the image close up, looking pretty good. Okay, what I'm going to use is Topaz Labs Denoise. Okay, now now you have to pay for this. This is a a little bit pricey, but it it works really good. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to calculate, let me back this off just a little bit so we can see a little bit larger area. It's going to make a calculation of what it thinks we should do to reduce the noise. <clears throat> but we can play around with this. I can draw this color noise reduction up a little bit and knock a little bit more of the, the color noise out. I can also bring this uh, slider up and it will do a calculation. And that will probably get a little more of this noise out of the picture for me. Okay. I can also enhance the sharpness just a tad. And you can see it's dropping a little bit of the noise out. I, I'm really in tight on this picture right now. So you're seeing all of the, you know, the worst parts of it. But uh, maybe, maybe just a tad more. See what that does to it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me let me go all the way out here and get uh, a little little better image of this. Let's see what this is doing. This is going to show the entire picture. Let me pause this because this will take a couple of minutes here. Okay, I apologize for something here. I uh, went back in and started making adjustments and forgot to turn the recorder back on to show you. Um, I decided there a second ago that I had this a little bit over sharpened. So I backed off the enhanced sharpness just a tad. And uh, that's one problem with uh, any astrophotography. You, you don't want to over sharpen too much. Uh, you, can, you can get really carried away with these sliders. And uh, so, anyways, you can see this is the original. You can see the noise in here. You can see here, um, 
the noise is greatly improved here. It looks a little bit better. Uh, the image is still looking pretty clear. I like to look down in these details. Um, I, I like that. So I, I'm pretty happy with what this is looking like. I'm going to click on apply. This will take a couple of minutes to make the final calculation. Then it will take me back over to Photoshop and we'll see what we've got. Okay, here we are back over in Photoshop and um, the image is looking pretty good, I think. I'm. This is certainly the best Galaxy picture that I've ever been able to capture. It far exceeds um, my expectations of what it would look like. A um, couple things that we can do. Um, I'm gonna go over here to image size. I'm actually going to reduce the size of this by 50%. Okay, now remember, I drizzled it um, uh, a two times dribble, so drizzle. So I doubled the size of the picture. I need to make it a little bit more manageable. So I come down here and um, decrease the size of the picture. But look how sharp this is. Look how good this looks. Uh, you can see here, uh, up here, here are uh, some of the outer reaches of the galaxy. You can see the color in here. One of the neat things about Messier 33. Uh, let me just mention a couple things about it. You'll notice all of this bluish and, and purple and, and all of this. One of the things that, that indicates is these are areas that have a lot of active star formation in them. What's neat here is what you're actually looking at when you're looking at these. Um, uh, let me zoom in just a little bit closer. Um, these, are, these are areas of nebulosity. This, these big areas here here, here, that's areas where uh, you have these giant emission nebulas. Like over here, you've got this one that's coming out a little bit more green. Um, and it, those are, are areas where new stars are being born. The other thing that's kind of neat about M33 is that it doesn't have a central bulge like most galaxies do. You know, If you were to look at the Andromeda, for instance, um, it has a giant, um, you know, bulge in the middle. Let me see if I can find a quick picture here of M33 to show you, or uh, the Andromeda to show you what I'm talking about. Um, it has that massive bulge in the middle. You don't have that here in, in, in this particular picture. Let me see. These are old pictures of Andromeda. I'm embarrassed to even show those to you. Um, I give you this is a this is an unprocessed part. This is a mosaic I did recently of the Andromeda galaxy. This is not the final process picture, but look at the big bulge here. M33 doesn't have that. And one of the things that astro professional astronomers tell us is that uh, that's because this particular uh, galaxy has led a fairly calm existence. Um, and because of its orientation, we're looking at it face on. We can see just tremendous details in this, uh, uh, in this galaxy. So uh, overall, I'm really happy with this image. I might go in and, and do just a little bit more work on it, but I think you can see where it's going. This is uh, the best image that I've ever gotten of a galaxy. I'm pretty excited about it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about processing and imaging by taking this. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, be sure to share it with your friends. I'm really trying to increase the number of people that uh, I have subscribed to my channel and that are seeing it. So please uh, tweet it out, Facebook it out, Instagram it out, however you can get the news out. If you would help me share the news about my uh, channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And I hope that you get a chance to go out and enjoy the wonders of the night sky. Again, this is just a, an incredible sight when you look at this. But look at all the incredible dust lanes and uh, just the beauty of, of, of creation. The beauty of what's out there in our universe is amazing. This is uh, incredible. This is one of our neighboring galaxies. This is a sister galaxy to our own Milky Way. Pretty cool. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will tune back in next week when we look at some more um, um, images. Thanks for tuning in.
quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.